If you're brand new to using Elementor, then you're going to love this video because coming up, I'm going to give you my top tips to getting started with Elementor. Hello and welcome back to the WebMonkey Show. I'm Alex. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe wherever you are. Now, like I said in the intro, today's video is going to be for users who are new to using Elementor and would like to learn like the best tips and tricks to get started with the plugin. So I've got eight of them for you. So without wasting any time, let's get started. All right. So the first tip is actually going to be the answer to the question of whether or not you should buy the paid version of Elementor. Now, if you've already gotten yourself the paid version of Elementor, congratulations. It is a fantastic plugin. And in fact, my default recommendation would always be for you to buy the paid version of Elementor because you get access to so much more features, so much more functionality and power. It is worth every penny. However, if you're still skeptical, you're not quite sure whether or not you need the paid version of Elementor. Well, ask yourself this question. What exactly am I trying to accomplish? If you already have yourself a very powerful theme and you just want to use Elementor to replace the default uh, Gutenberg page builder by WordPress themselves, then the free version of Elementor might just be enough for you. However, if you want to use Elementor to build your site, because with the paid version of Elementor, you can actually build templates for your homepage, your posts, other pages, and so on. It is really, really powerful. So if you want to unlock and use the full features of Elementor, then definitely the paid version is what you should go for. Now, in a scenario where you do want to use the paid versions of Elementor, but you can't afford to buy the plugin or maybe for any other reason, you don't want to install the paid version. There are three free add-ons I can recommend for you that will further enhance the functionality of the free version of Elementor that you are using. The first one here is going to be Elementor header, footer, and blocks template by Brainstorm Force. What this plugin does is that it allows you to create a custom header, footer, plus blocks of content that you can use on your WordPress website. I highly, highly recommend it. Next is going to be the essential add-ons for Elementor by WP Developer. This unlocks about 40 free additional elements that will further complement the free version of Elementor that, that you have. And then you also have the E add-ons for Elementor. I really like them. In fact, I'm currently making a full tutorial on how to use all the free and paid versions uh, of the plugin. But the free version of the plugin offers you some very, very unique, interesting features. I don't want to go uh, through them right now. But I would highly recommend that you check them out because they've got some very, very interesting uh, additional features for Elementor. The second tip is all about what theme you should use with Elementor. And again, this will depend on whether or not you're going with the free version or the paid version of Elementor. If you're going to go with the free version of Elementor, then the themes recommended by Elementor themselves are you've got the Layers WP, you have Generate Press, you have Hestia, Ocean WP, Zakra, and Astra. Not many options to choose from, but I have personally used the Generate Press, uh, Ocean WP, and Astra, and I can guarantee you that they're very, very good themes that work well with Elementor. If you're going to go with the paid version of Elementor, then I recommend you go with the Hello theme made by Elementor themselves. This is the fastest theme available for Elementor because it is extremely lightweight. It has limited functionality, but that's the point. Its job is supposed to complement and support the paid version of Elementor. So if you're going to use the paid version of Elementor to build yourself your templates for your header, footer, pages, and posts, you don't need a powerful theme. You just need a very, very simple, ultra fast theme. And that's exactly what the Hello theme is. The next step is all about making use of the global settings, the global fonts, global uh, colors with Elementor. And before I show you what that's all about, go to your Elementor back and go to settings. And then under the general tab, you will see these two boxes asking you to disable the default colors and fonts. Make sure both of these are checked, save your changes. And of course, I will explain to you why you want to do this. Now, I'm going to go over to my homepage to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Right here, whenever you're trying to edit a page or a post with Elementor, if you click on the hamburger menu right up there, you will see site settings. Now you click in there and what you're going to see, first of all, would be the global colors and then the global fonts. 
The way this tool work is that you can set predefined colors and font styles and then apply those to as many elements as you want on your website. And the good thing is that if you need to make a change to either that font style or that color, you can simply go back, make that one simple change, and then it will reflect on every element that you've applied that change to. So as an example, if I go to global colors by default, I have four primary, secondary text and accent. Right now you can see that my accent is set to this uh, variation of red, okay? If I was gonna click inside, and I change this to something else, you will see right now that the WordPress guides text right here is changing as well because I've already applied this particular color to that text. Let me prove this to you. I'm going to update this, okay? And then I'm gonna go, let me just close this. I'm going to go to the actual element itself right now. So I'm going to go to WordPress guides right here, okay? And then I'm going to go to style. I'll go to the content. And then right away, you see, you see color. You can see right now I have the uh, global icon. That's for the uh, global uh, font color. I can click inside. And now from here, let's say I instead decide I'm going to go with the primary color, which is a very uh, dark shade of blue. Let me choose that one, okay? So now you see the color has changed to blue. If I was to, let me just update this first. Now, if I was to go back to my global font, I'm sorry, my global color, global colors. And now if I, were, if I was going to change the primary color, I'm going to click inside here and then change this to something, you know, very, very uh, drastic, something like, you know, purple or pink. You can see right now that WordPress guides is also changing as a result. So that's exactly how global fonts work. You can add as many uh, global uh, colors as you want and then apply those colors to as many elements as you want. And then if you need to make a change, you simply go back to your global font or global color and then make the change there. Like I said, it also uh, affects global fonts. By default, you also have for primary, secondary, text, accents. You can click on the pen right there and then choose the style. You can choose the font family, the size, the weight, and so on. And then it works exactly the same way with the global uh, colors. Now you can also add your own custom uh, font style or a global color if you want. What you simply need to do is where you have your global fonts, for example, you will see add style. You click on add style right here and then you click on the pen and then you can choose the font family, the size and so on. So you have access to so many right here and then you simply save. If you want to give it a custom name, you click on the new item uh, box right there and now you can add the name uh, personal just as an example. Okay, and then I can update. And I can do the exact same thing for the global colors as well. Let me go back to global colors. Down you can see we have add color. You can also add your global colors and global fonts directly from your uh, element. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to update this real quick. So if I was to go back to my WordPress uh, guides text right, right here. Uh, let's wait for the page to load. Okay, I'm going to edit the element. And I'm going to go to style, content. Okay, right here you can see where I have color. I can click on the global uh, icon to choose one of the global colors. Or I can click on the box itself representing the color. And then from here I can choose a new type of color. And then right here you see I have the plus button that says create new global value. Yes, you can click on the pen button right there. And now... You can set the name for your new global color and I'll just call this one personal uh, color. And now I can click on create. I can update. And now if I was to go back to my global colors, site settings, uh, global colors. Now you can see I now have access to the personal uh, color, global color right there. Also, in addition to using global colors and global fonts, you can also make use of the theme style where you can actually set directly the font style, the colors for your H1s, H2, H3, your text, your buttons, your links, and so on. However, in order to be able to make use of these functionalities, you need to, dis you need to disable the default colors and default fonts uh, by Elementor. That's exactly why you want to 
I disabled them. So the, the way this works is that when you go to your typography, for example, you can set a text color for your normal text. You can set the typography, the font family, and so on. And then right here, you've got the ones for your links. You've got the ones for your H1s, H2s. So I would highly recommend for you that you go in here and then set the, the predefined styles for your H1s, your H2s, your H3s, your H4s. You probably might not be using H5 or H6 on your website, but at least H1 to H4. And then, of course, set the styles for your links as well. And then also your uh, body text. This will save you plenty of time. And just to inform you just really, really quickly, because you're new to uh, Elementor, even if you set the global fonts, the global colors, and you go in here, you set for your H1s, H2s, you can always add unique styles to each individual element. So as an example, let me close this. Let me go over to the uh, WordPress speed text. So let's say, for example, I wanted to uh, make this text uh, a bit smaller than the rest. I can go right there, go to my style, go to content, and then right away where I have typography, I can change the size specifically only for this particular element. So just keep that in mind. You don't always have to use the uh, global colors or the global font styles. However, for consistency purposes, it's often a good idea to stick with the global fonts or the global uh, colors. The next tip is all about disabling whatever elements that you're not using with Elementor. Now, as an example over here, I'm trying to edit my homepage and you can see right now, I do have access to so many elements. And the thing is, I'm probably not using at least 15 to 20% of them. So rather than me having to look at them over and over again and having the page load them, it will be so much better for me to just disable them once and for all. Now, how do you do this? Well, going back to my first tip, you can install the e-addons our core plugin for free. And then what you're going to do is when you go to your back end, after you've installed the plugin, go to, you will see, you will see add-ons at the back end, go to your dashboard. This is what you would see now, right here under the section of add more e add-ons. I want you to go ahead to install this particular add-on. It's called the e add-ons editor for Elementor. It's right here. You click on install free add-on. Okay. And then after installing the add-on, you will now of course need to activate it. So it's installed, go back up here. You will see the e-add-ons editor right here. Just click on enable add-on right there. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the settings tab. Okay. Now you will see e-add-ons editor Click in there. And now from here, you will have access to all the available elements and widgets with Elementor. And of course, you, you can disable whichever ones you're not working with. As an example, you can see right now, I already disabled uh, SoundCloud, Counter, Divider. If I wanted to disable the icon box and HTML, I click on HTML, I click on icon box, I save my current settings. And now if I was to go back to my homepage right here and I load this page, I will no longer see the HTML or the icon box uh, elements. This is one of the best ways to improve your efficiency as well as improve the load times of your pages with Elementor. Tip number five is all about caching issues. And let's say, for example, you've made a change to the background color of your page with Elementor. You update, you refresh the page, but you don't see the new color. Well, it could be a caching issue. Make sure you have caching disabled on your website. Make sure you also have caching disabled on your web hosts make sure you've also cleared the cache of your browser. Now, if you've done all of that and you're still not seeing the new color, one thing you can do is you go over to Elementor, go to tools, and then under the general tab, you will see regenerate CSS. Click on the button right there. And what this does is that Elementor will try to regenerate the new style sheet that should uh, incorporate the new color that you've added. So when you do this, you should now see the new color taking effect. Sticking with the Elementor tool settings, you do have access to a particular feature known as safe mode. By default, it is set to disable. However, if you're having any issues, maybe something isn't working quite properly and you suspect maybe a plugin conflict, maybe you recently installed a new plugin or you want an update. One thing you could do for troubleshooting would be to go in here and then simply enable the safe mode. What this does is that it will only load the Elementor editor without actually loading the theme or any other plugin. That way you will know for a fact as to whether or not 
indeed you're having a plugin conflict. Tip number seven is all about making your website responsive with Elementor. And let me show you one very, very useful feature. Regardless of what elements you are trying to edit, whether it's a section, column, text, image, video, whatever, if you go to the advanced tab for that element, you will see the responsive uh, tab where you can actually hide that element either on your desktop, tablet, or mobile device. As an example, if I was to click on the edit section button right here and I go to advanced, you can see I have the responsive tab right there. I click on it and then on the visibility, I can choose to hide this on my tablet or hide it on a mobile device. The same thing applies to elements directly. For example, I can click on this rocket right here. I go to the edit element button. I go to advanced again. I go to responsive and again, right here, I have the option to hide this element either on the tablet, uh, mobile, or maybe even on the desktop. So keep in mind that you do have access to this wonderful feature because not every feature or element looks good on a mobile device. There might be situations where you need to hide them specifically for mobile devices or tablets, and that's exactly how you would do so. The eighth and final tip is all about getting support and learning as much as you can about Elementor. And for support, I would highly recommend you join the Facebook group called Elemental Community. It has over 100,000 members at this point, and I'm pretty sure you'll get all the support that you need. And when it comes to learning more about Elemental, I do have plenty of extensive tutorials. Be sure to check out my videos. And let me also recommend the previous video I recorded about Elemental, where I show you how to work with sections, columns, margins, patterns, uh, the Z index, and so much more. So there you have it, my top eight tips on getting started with Elementor. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with anyone whom you feel might benefit from it. And if you're here for the first time, please do consider subscribing. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.